Hi and welcome to another video on UiPath with me, Jeppe. In this one we're taking a look at how you can save yourself a lot of time and pain by building and using your own process template. Before we start, I'd like to encourage you to subscribe to my channel and at the end of the video, if you liked it, give it a thumbs up. But let's get to it. So for the first long while when I was working with UiPath Studio, my reflex when opening Studio would just be to go to the new project, select process, and then start building my process from scratch. I did not care about templates. What templates are, are skeletons for projects that are similar to other projects you've built. So uh, if you do the same kind of work again and again, using a template would be a good idea. So UiPath provides a number of templates, and one of them is the robotic enterprise framework that many of you have probably heard of and probably use. Now, if you don't use it, uh, don't don't be scared. You, you know, there's a life without the re-framework. But uh, it has some elements that I really like and that I really like to use in smaller automations where I don't want to use the full featured robotic enterprise framework template. So what we'll do is we'll start a new template project here. And the first thing we'll do, we'll just name it Yebes template. And then immediately we'll jump to another instance of UiPath Studio where I have the robotic enterprise framework template open. What I really like about the enterprise framework is that it's split into these different states. And the first state is the init stage where it initializes applications and settings. And the settings part is done by storing them in an Excel workbook. And over here in the project pane, we have this config file inside of a data folder and we're going to steal that by copying go into my own template and we'll create a folder in here called data and we'll paste the config file into here now what the config file contains are three pages one called settings one called constants and one called assets now uh, going into too much details about this is beyond the scope of this video but what you can do in here is for example in the settings if i wanted to store a db connection string which is the you know description of how I connect to a database I could type in some stuff here uh, and I could go on and on you know with a, with the entire connection string but sometimes settings change after you deploy your automation and by using a configuration file you can instead of having to change your code and redeploy the package and all of that you can just change the settings in this config file and every time the automation starts, it will read the config file and then have the settings at hand from that file. And that's really flexible. So I'll save it. And then I'll steal another file from the reframework template. And that is this init all settings file. And I'll just copy that, go to my own template and paste it in. I'll open my main workflow and I'll drag the init settings file into this as the first activity. That will create an invoke activity that invokes this init all settings file. Now we need to configure the arguments for this file. This uh, is lit up in orange and that means that the arguments have not been configured correctly. I'll click the import arguments button. And we can see here that there's an ingoing parameter called in config file that has the path to this configuration file. There's one called config sheets that tells us what sheets do we want to look at inside the configuration file. And I should note that the assets sheet is read by default every single time, no matter what the other sheets are called. And then it has an outgoing argument called out underscore config. And that's a dictionary object containing string and object value pairs for the settings that we type into the config worksheet. So we need a variable for this. I'll hit control K and I'll just call it config. And we can see that variable now in our variables pane. So what this enables us to do is when we run this automation, if I just go to the activities and we'll just do a message box, what I can now do is I can access all of the stuff that is inside the configuration file by simply typing config and then the name of the setting that I put in. And I put in one called DB connection string. So if I do this, this should give us a message box typing out the connection string that I just entered into the config file. So I'll run it. And sure enough, it writes out the data source equals my server, da, da, da. And I can click OK. Now imagine this was at runtime. This is an automation in production. 
if I open the file wherever it's stored, you know, I could change this to hi, I am a connection string, right? And when I save the config file and the next time the automation runs, without us having to change any of the code inside the project, it now shows the new setting. So this was a, a little bit of a sidetrack, but this was just a, an example to show why I would want to build a template. I like the config file. I don't always like to use the robotic enterprise framework. So this is a little template that will use a config file. And so what I'll do next is I'll say, okay, my template is complete. Well, I'll delete the message box because I don't want that every time. I'll remember to save my project and I'll go to publish my template. I'll just uh, make sure that we publish locally and click publish. And it says that the template was published successfully. Now, if I open a new instance of uh, Studio, we can see here in the template section that I can now use Yevis template. And I'll do that. I won't give it a new name this time, but we'll just wait for it to load. And now if we open the main workflow, we can see that we have a project using that template. And we have the init all settings file being invoked. And we have the config file in our data folder. So this is just a shortcut to get things done quicker when you do the same kinds of projects over and over again. And that's really the secret of templates. If you're curious about the robotic enterprise framework, there are tons of good videos out there. I'm working on one that is my take on the framework. If you'd like to see that, don't forget to subscribe, hit the notification bell. And if you like this video, give it a like and I'll make some more videos for you. So take care, stay safe, and I'll see you in the next one. Bye.